Good afternoon. I am Claude Aiken, uh, President and CEO of WISPA, and I am here today uh, with uh, Assistant Secretary Rettel from uh, the NTIA. Uh, we've known each other for quite a while, uh, and you are you've been in this job for a while now, and it's it's good to be here with you. We're we're sad you couldn't come out to make it uh, in Vegas with us, but uh, we're excited to be able to do this and show this to all of our members who are there. So you know you've been uh, you've been pretty loud about your commitment to rural broadband. You've been a great Spectrum guy. Our guys really need uh, Spectrum, but you know I wanted to give you an opportunity in your own words to tell uh, our members about uh, what NTIA does in your own words. Thanks, Claude. Uh, it, it's great to be here. I'm sorry that this is how I have to do this and that I couldn't be with you all in Nevada, but I'm glad to get a chance to talk to you about NTIA and what we're doing to help promote rural broadband, particularly uh, in our work through Spectrum. Um, WISPA's members are a critical part of the wireless ecosystem. You are helping us solve not only our problems in using Spectrum more efficiently, but also in bringing rural broadband to those who desperately need connectivity. Here at NTIA, we're currently focused on making sure we look holistically at the low, the mid, and the high band spectrum and figure out ways to produce more for commercial use for both licensed and unlicensed uses. I'd like to take a minute, if I could, to highlight in particular the work that our Institute for Telecommunication Sciences in Boulder, Colorado is doing with the 3.5 gigahertz band. Um, the CBRS spectrum, as many of you know, holds a lot of promise for both unlicensed and licensed use to bring more broadband to more Americans. Critical to the use of that band is the ability of federal and non-federal users to share. Our ITS engineers are hard at work in Boulder right now trying to certify the systems that will make that sharing possible. Those two systems are the spectrum access system and the environmental sensing capability. These critical systems will effectively take what had once been a static exclusion zone that prevented any use of these spectrum bands near military installations and instead dynamically protect them when they need to be protected. The environmental sensing capability will let us take those zones down to zero when the Navy doesn't need access for radar systems and will allow us to have WISPA and its members and other citizens around the country use that spectrum in beneficial ways where it's available. We're really excited about this, and I hope you are too. And Claude, I know you share my excitement about oh, 3.5 coming to market. Absolutely. It's a, it's a huge uh, piece of spectrum for our members, especially since a lot of them are already deployed in the, uh, in the upper portion of the band. So we're, you talked a little bit about what's, uh, what's coming down the pike with, with CBRS. How about further on into the future? What do you see when you look into your crystal ball? I know you've worked on spectrum policy a lot longer than I have. Uh, what do you see coming down the pike from your perspective on spectrum policy? Well, I think we're, we're at an inflection point in spectrum policy. We're going to continue at NTIA to try to meet the dual mandate that Congress has given us. NTIA as an agency is tasked with making sure that our federal spectrum users have the spectrum they need to perform their critical missions, whether it be weather, air traffic control, or training for our men and women in uniform. That spectrum is critical to our national security and to our economic security. That's only one half of what we do on spectrum policy, though. The other half is dictated by Congress, which is to look to find ways to make federal users more efficient and make more spectrum available for commercial services. Now, I've said this a couple times, and I'll say it again here. The era of easy clearing is over. We've run that playbook a lot, and it's been great for the U.S. economy. We are the world leader in 4G LTE. We are the world leader in providing broadband to our citizens, and WISPA's members are key to our national success. But we're going to have to do some more hard work to figure out how to make these two things work together. And that's why I'm really proud of the work that my team does every day to try and find ways to make systems work together more efficiently. Um, the next thing I see coming down the pike is one we announced in December of last year. And that's looking at the 3.45 to 3.55 spectrum. It's immediately adjacent to the CBRS spectrum I mentioned earlier. And that 100 megahertz holds real promise for sharing between DOD radar systems and more of the kinds of systems that your members, Claude, have been deploying and bringing, uh, using to bring broadband to rural parts of America. We're excited about that, and there's a lot of work left to be done on it. All right, that sound, sounds great. Because uh, as, you, as you well know, Spectrum continues to be incredibly important to uh, 
all folks in, in the wireless ecosystem. So, you know, I think a lot of our members tend to think about uh, FCC and they think about USDA when we're talking about rural broadband. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your perspective on rural broadband and what NTIA is doing in that regard? Sure. So, uh, Earlier this year, the White House asked, the President asked Secretary Purdue at USDA to work on a rural prosperity task force. Um, the report that came out of that identified broadband as a key driver of the economy in rural America. And NTIA plays a critical role in helping to knock down barriers to bring broadband to parts of the country that are unserved and underserved. Uh, I'd like to highlight a couple areas, if I could, that I think our work will be really helpful to WISPA members. Um, first of all, we're looking at ways to streamline permitting within the federal government. Uh, NTIA co-chairs a working group that uh, we lead with the Department of Agriculture that will look at ways across the entire government to streamline federal permitting. Everyone who has worked in this field has a story about getting all the way through the process with one agency only to find out that there was another agency that you needed to get a yes from. Mm -hmm. that, that's not an acceptable outcome for us anymore. And, and the president has made clear it's something that we should be trying to solve. Also, the federal government happens to be the largest landowner in the United States. Mm -hmm. We own thousands of buildings, thousands of towers and utility poles. We're doing work right now to say, okay, what can we do to bring those assets to bear on this challenge? When your members look to put up facilities, I would love for them to be able to say first, hey, is there a federal tower that's already in place that I can lease space on mm -hmm. for my transmitters? Um, we're trying to bring all those assets together right now, and it's a real challenge. Um, as you all know, the U.S. government is a large and dis, you know, geographically dispersed entity. And bringing together these assets is challenging, but we're up to the task. The last piece is taking the different pieces of the federal government that fund broadband. And you mentioned our U.S. and the FCC, but there are others that uh, work on other broadband loans, broadband grants, or other of the pieces of the infrastructure that make broadband possible. We'll surprise no one who's ever worked in Washington or who's worked with Washington that sometimes the left hand and the right hand don't always talk to one another. And so what we're doing now is trying to make sure we can bring all those people to the table and say, how can we make sure we're working together? A big piece of that for us is what we're doing at NTIA on the broadband map. So Congress last year asked us to work with the FCC to improve the national broadband map. But I know many rural Americans and many companies that serve rural America were frustrated with the FCC's most recent broadband map. They thought it overstated coverage in rural America to their detriment. Um, you know, I, I don't want to knock the FCC. They're doing a really good job with the data they've got, but I think everyone agrees at this point that their map only tells part of the story. NTIA is working diligently right now. We're going to be putting out requests for comments soon on where we can find additional data sets and to bring technology to the table on telling the rest of the story on what rural broadband really looks like in America. And I hope that your members will be active participants because in some of the hardest to reach areas, your members are serving, they are serving well, they're serving in areas where customers are choosing them over other alternatives. Mm -hmm. We think that's a story that needs to be told. Absolutely, well, and I know our, our members will really appreciate those, uh, those kind words from you. So, you know, we've talked a lot about policy so far. Let's just talk a little bit about, uh, about you, uh, you know, there's, there's always a person behind the position. <laughs> and so just tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, you know, how, uh, how happy you were early this, earlier this month when uh, Penn State uh, trounced Pitt in the, uh, the <laughs> great annual rivalry game. Well, uh, that's sad. Sadly, the Keystone Classic, as they've now been calling it, will be coming to an end soon. But as a, a family where my, my in-laws are both Pitt Panthers, yeah. my wife and I are both Nittany Lions. Uh, that was, family divided. Was, it was a good game this year for us. We were, we were very happy with the outcome. It, I, does, I wish it would always turn out that way. And um, uh, it's going to be a tough season for our Nittany Lions. But um, a little bit about me. I started my career working in the competitive wireless industry. Um, I spent six years as a regulatory lawyer before turning my attention to policy making instead of you know, trying to uh, influence policymakers. I spent seven years on Capitol Hill working for Chairman Fred Upton and Chairman Greg Walden on the House Energy and Commerce Committee. And uh, I'm just, I couldn't be prouder of the work that I was able to do through my bosses while I was there on promoting broadband deployment, bringing spectrum, both licensed and unlicensed, to market and streamlining facilities siting. Um, I think those are some of the biggest achievements that we've had in communications policy in the last six, seven years, and I'm proud to have played a small part in them. Sounds great. Well, you know, like uh, a lot of uh, potential political appointees, you were 
uh, unfortunately held up for a while uh, in uh, in confirmation limbo, so they say. And I'm just kind of curious, just from a from a personal standpoint, what was sort of the the funniest, well-meaning thing that somebody <laughs> said to you during that period when you had gone through the entire process and were just waiting for. Uh, Waiting for the door to anti to open to you. Well, I, I do want to start by saying that, as, as all, like all political appointees who've gone through this process, I am incredibly thankful to Secretary Ross and President Trump Absolutely. for sticking with me through the whole process. Um, it's long and arduous, and, um, and it's part of our system, but it's, um, it's not yeah. fun. Um, <laughs> the most well-meaning thing someone said to me, it actually probably wasn't something someone said to me, but rather to my wife. Ah. Uh, I, a friend of ours said, it must be so nice having David at home. He must be getting so much work done, to which she said, now there's an idea. And so uh, my honeydew list uh, got exponentially longer shortly thereafter. Uh, but I, I think she lived to regret that because it involved me buying a lot of tools and building things in our house. So I, 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 think, I think ultimately she regretted the decision. As someone who is probably about to undergo some home renovations, I, <laughs> I look forward to that as well. So David, thank you so much for uh, spending the time to, to talk to me and talk to our members about, uh, about Spectrum, about rural broadband, and about what you're uh, you're doing here at NTIA. We really appreciate it. My pleasure and good luck for a, a successful show. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you.